This video is part two in a series of videos dealing with looseness or slop in the front ends of Craftsman and Husqvarna garden tractor mowers. What you're looking at here in the picture is the pivoting cast iron front axle on the Craftsman and Husqvarna garden tractors. Now what's interesting about this axle is very strong but the only part that you can get for it is the pivoting bushing. You cannot order the bushings for the kingpins at the two ends. Now I'm not happy with that. I think those bushings should be replaceable. Well since you can't get them is there are there any options? Well yes there are and I'm going to show you one that I've used many times over the years something I learned a long time ago where I had uh, employment where parts were hard to come by and you had to use your ingenuity. So keep watching please. Now what you see here is the spindle. The tire has been removed. But notice the play that's there. Now that's the bushings and the kingpin part that is loose causing that play. Now it's not severe, but I've got a mower here that has extreme slop in the front end. And so I'm going through it piece by piece. So I'm going to remove the kingpin and the spindle assembly. I'm going to take the top clip off. I've already taken the little red rubber um, cover off. I did that using some heat from a heat gun. So there's the clip. Take the thrust washer off. Now what you're going to need in order to do what I'm going to show you is you've got to have some kind of piece of pipe or uh, I've, uh, in this case I'm using an old kingpin and it's three quarters of an inch um, and it needs to be at least three inches long, five or six inches long is perfect, probably no longer than seven inches but it can come from a, uh, a spike that they use to put concrete forms in. Um, it can be hollow pipe or like I said it can be a solid kingpin from an old truck. So I've got to loosen up the linkage here so that I can get the spindle kingpin assembly off. So there it is. All right, now what I want to do is I want to knock those bushings out. And I'm using just a socket to do that. I uh, found a socket that fit kind of nice and there's one. There's two of them. One goes at the bottom of the um, tube here and one goes at the top. They're three quarters of an inch long. The shaft that runs through them, the kingpin, is three quarters of an inch. So here I'm using the kingpin and the bushing to resolve my problem. Now, how am I doing that? Well, you notice I'm cranking really hard on that vise. The jaws on the vise have a coarse knurled surface. Lots of bumps all over it. Well that's perfect for what I want to do because I want to make in small indentations into the bushing. Now those ind indentations when I do this they're not just on the outside they're on the inside because it pushes the metal in such a way as they're actually on the inside as well. Just a little bit and that's what you want. So that when you put the bushing back into the axle sleeve there, it'll compress it and it'll be a tight fit. Now this is the second bushing that I'm doing here. Basically the same thing. Just crank hard on it, put those little indentations in there, those little dimples, and create a situation there where when it's put into the sleeve, It'll compress harder and it'll be a nice tight fit.
and all I'm doing is turning that bushing a little bit each time there it is and I'm checking the inside sure enough I can just barely feel them on the inside so now I'm going to put the bushing back in now this is will eventually be the bottom bushing it's going into the top right now just out of convenience for installation just making sure and get it started. Now I'm using the king pin. You can use your three-quarter inch pipe or whatever it is that you've got, but it needs to be a nice smooth three-quarter inch uh, surface. So I'm going to knock that bushing down just a little bit into the cavity. Now I'm going to come up from the bottom and just kind of get some light taps and turning that king pin as I go so that it's working through the bushing and I'm determining the size is what I want it to be, three quarters of an inch. I'm going to bring that bushing down close to where it's supposed to be, not quite all the way, I'm just lacking just a little bit so that in the process of working with it I push it down a little bit further, it won't be too much. In goes the top bushing. Just making sure that it fits. Knocking it all the way in. I keep twisting and turning it so to ensure that it has a nice round surface inside the bushing. A little lubrication is helpful. I'm going to push that top bushing down just a little bit. And I'm making sure that I'm not pushing that bottom bushing out from the bottom. Making sure it's clean, there's no little burrs or anything in there. A little grease on the kingpin. And I'm ready to install the kingpin spindle assembly. It's tight. It's not so tight that it's going to cause damage or anything like that but it's tight just working it with my hands so I got it in there turns okay I gotta back it off just a little bit to get my linkage back connected get the nut back on it okay now I can put the spindle in its proper position and it's ready for the thrust washer and the clip. And there it is, it's locked in. A little bit of grease. Make sure those bushings have plenty of lubrication. There's no play in those bushings and kingpin now. And I need to tighten up all my linkage, make sure that it's safe.
and now I'm going to show you here I heat it up you can use a blow dryer that's the heat gun I'm using there and uh, just warm it up real good so it's soft and pliable and it's going to feel hot so you might want to wear gloves and you just kind of push it down maybe get a screwdriver help it get started over the lip properly and there it is it's in place so we hope this has been helpful to you maybe you've got a similar problem uh, we ask that you'll click the like button and if you want to see the further videos that are coming up on this subject of the looseness on the tractors then uh, please subscribe thanks again